blow it out first. <laughs> the doctor came back and said, yeah, you do a colonoscopy. I'm not going to have to do what I was going to do for you. Get back off the table. I'll, I'll see you in a week or two. So that means I got to take all this junky stuff. I got to drink it down and clean me out inside. So when I get up on that table on Wednesday, y'all be praying for me. I'm going to need some prayer time. All right? <laughs> but that's all right. I'm going to be all right. Yes. This is preventative maintenance. Yes. Right. Preventative medicine is what you all need to do. Right. And that's an amazing thing because I haven't done this in a long time because I'm a big believer in preventative medicine. I believe in checking yourself out. Making sure you're going to be all right because you need to be around a long time. These bodies are human. You know, they do have problems will come upon them and what you got to do is keep checking to make sure you're going to be okay because things will creep up on you and if you don't check them they'll, they'll, they'll have a grip upon you and then you'll be praying Lord help me get through this thing when we can prevent it before it happens so I don't mind taking this colonoscopy but I wanted to mention one thing we have some men in the house here I don't know how many of you may have had your prostate checked have you had a, ever had a PSA taken? Has every man in here ever had a PSA taken? Do you know what your count is? Some of you have not raised your hands, okay? Let me tell you something. Get it done. Amen. Get it done. I went to the doctor with mine quite a few years ago. And the doctor says, well, you don't need a PSA. I says, why don't I? He said, because you're too young and you don't need it. And I said, well, I don't know about that. I said, do it anyway. He says, no, he says, you really don't need it. Don't, 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 you're too young for it. And I said, humor me, do it anyway. He said, okay, if you insist, that's what I'll do. So they took a PSA check on me. It was the highest PSA count they've had in your county. It was just that high. It was so high that they looked at it and said, there's no way you can be not full of cancer. So they checked me out and I've been going through prostate checks constantly every year to make sure that I have no cancer. And I do not have cancer. See, I don't have cancer. I've already eaten that. But the Lord said that. The Lord said you don't have cancer. Even though the doctor, when he called me in the last time the, before him, He's the one that says, you have cancer. He says, no doubt in my mind. And it's amazing because I was on the road when he called me. He didn't even have the decency to call me in his office and tell me what he thought. He tells me this while I'm on the road that you're full of cancer. And I says, oh my. I was afraid to even come and tell my wife about it. Fear. Yeah. I was close to the Lord, but I still had fear. Yeah. And you know, it wasn't that I had fear for me. It was because I had fear of what was going to happen behind me. I was worried about her and my son and her mother and all of these things. But we did go to the doctor's office and while we sat there, and this is a long story, I know I've shared it before. But I'm sharing it now because I'm saying to you men, if you've never had a PSA taken, please humor me. Go have it done. It's not difficult. All they do is take a little blood from you and they take a count. I want to see you all around for a long time. Amen. Those of you that are married and has never had a PSA, wives, push them to have that PSA. Amen. Amen. Push them to have it done. Call the doctor. Call the doctor for That's them. Right. Carry them in. Yes. Get it done. That's right. It's very, very, very important. That is one of the biggest cancers that can be cured if you catch it in time. And believe me, one time or another in your life, man, we're going to get cancer in our prostate. So be ready for it, all right? So that's what they say. That's what they say. But even at that, it doesn't matter because even if it's there, it, it don't have to do nothing to you. But you'll know where you're at with that PSA count, all right? Just making me feel good because normally when I go out and do men's conferences, I usually start my conference off doing a, a, a push for PSAs because I know what it did for me I know how to help my life and so I push that for men and I've never done it here I'm so surprised I haven't done it here 
But that's what we got to do anyway. So wives, be like mine. Don't let you, if they won't let you get away from it, they'll jump on you. And they'll tell on you. And the doctor will be punching you all over the place. You're talking about, you won't be worried about it. One up one side. They got to get up to you. All right. She's telling me this. Yes. You all have to go through some stuff also. Well, I got a message the Lord gave me this morning that, well, not this morning, actually yesterday. Uh, I was involved in some things yesterday, and I didn't start studying until late. And as I was really trying to get into it, I knew what the subject was going to be, but I had to get into it a little deeper. I had to find out what it was all about. I want you to go to Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2, to start off with. And we'll get into the rest of it later on. I'm not going to read it yet. I'm just giving you a chance to get to it. Giving you a chance to find it. Go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 28th chapter, first verse. And the question that I have for you today, and I think that everybody needs to listen to very closely, is, Lord, do I have to obey the law? It's just that simple. Do I have to obey the law? And what I want to cover with these things, when I start talking about the law, there's three aspects of the law that we've got to be understanding about. But first of all, I want to cover what does law really mean? Why, why do we have to have such a thing as a law? What is the definition of law anyway? Why do we have to have it? Let me give you the dictionary's definition of the law. It says it's a binding custom or a practice of a community a rule of conduct or action prescribed or formally recognized as binding or enforced by a controlling authority. So somebody has to have an authority to be able to say that there's going to be a law. Because what good is a law without authority? So you can say it, but if you have no authority, the law means nothing. A rule or an order that is advisable or obligatory to observe. In other words, you got to do it whether you like it or didn't like it. It's a law that we've got to live by. It further observes that law implies imposition by a sovereign authority and the obligation of obedience on the part of all subjects to that authority. So there's laws out here today that have been put out and whether you like it or not, whether you dislike it or not, the point is, is that you are a obligated to fulfill that law. you got to live by it. That's right. you got to live by that law whether you like it or don't. Thus a law regulates and governs the behavior of someone or something. Now it's terrible to live a life without law. <laughs> I've been in places where there is no law. In fact when people refuse to observe the law that's when we really have some big issues. That's why lawyers make so much money because people refuse to follow the law. And so lawyers are always being busy trying to interpret what the law means and the law means this and the law means that or, or you didn't do this exactly according to the law and my goodness, law gets to be very complicated at times. There's governmental laws. There's government got laws out there. It says, this is how the nation's going to operate. We got laws to live by this and we got laws to live by that. Very good. Everybody has laws we have to live by. My wife and I spend time in Africa. And you're talking about lawless. I mean, those that was with us. Oh, where's Tramona at? She was with us. Hey, driving down the highway in Africa, Nigeria. There is no law as far as driving is concerned. We looked at a stoplight. We saw a stop, one stoplight in all of Nigeria we saw. And we pulled up to that stoplight and it was red and nobody slowed down. <laughs> I says, why do you have the stoplight? Why is it there? I says, why didn't you stop at the stoplight? He said, because if you stop at the stoplight, somebody will rob you. Oh. You can't stop at the stoplight. I said, are you kidding me? He said, no, I must stop at that stoplight. So everybody just, just like this, not even there. Lawlessness. Wow. There's no yield sign. There's no stop signs. They're there, but nobody sees them. Nobody recognizes them. Because there's no law. And without the law, what do you have? Chaos. 
chaos. Yes, chaos. So law is important that we have law. Yes. Woo! Mm -hmm. We've got to have law. Have you ever been driving down the highway yourself and the speed limit 70 miles an hour and you're doing about 80? Ooh. Now I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about somebody doing 80 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour speed zone. Don't everybody look at me like that? Like, hey, 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 fast like you. No, and all of a sudden you see a car parked alongside the highway. And all of a sudden you start mm -mm, touching the brake a little bit. You see brake lights coming on. Keep everybody trying to get down to 70 miles an hour to what speed limit is. And then you find out it's just a guy parked and he had to go across the street somewhere to be able to do something. And you slowed down for somebody that didn't even have a, wasn't even no authority at all. And you thought, you, that's because you thought yes. that there might be somebody there that's going to control <laughs> that law. See, but there is times when you're driving down the road and you look in the rear view mirror and you see blue lights or red lights flashing in your rear view mirror, your heart goes to pumping. Because even if you're not breaking the law, you start thinking, am I breaking the law? <laughs> so see, we understand the law, but we must understand the nature of the law. And what comes along with law is commands, mm -hmm. and after commands are demands. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at this command, and we're going to get into some scripture here in a minute. A command is an order given or an authoritative directive. It stresses the official exercise of authority and expresses the will of the authority based upon the established rules and the regulations that govern the group. In other words, the law is already there, and so now you've got a commander to stand on high watching to make sure, are you fulfilling what that law says? Thus, a commandment specifies behavior relative to the law. Oh, now we're getting a little heavier here now. It's relative to the law. So if the law says... A man shall not be with another woman other than his wife. That's a law. That's right. A commandment says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Now that's what the command is. But the command is only fulfilling what the law says. The law says you won't do it, but the command says, thou shalt not. Mm -hmm. So you must understand, the nature of the law is so very important to understand. Because afterward comes a command to make sure you fulfill it. Mm. And it says here, thus a commandment specifies behavior relative to the law. Oh, we're going to go somewhere with this one. And then we have a demand. Uh -huh. It's the act of asking with authority. In other words, I got authority so I can demand that you fulfill the law. Mm -hmm. I have the authority to do that. Now, I may not, you know, I, I, I can demand you to fulfill the law because the law is already there. I'm not making up the law. The law is already there. So I demand. In this house, there are rules and there's regulations and there's laws within this house that we fulfill through the word of God. We've got to live by those rules. And sometimes it's a commandment. Thou shalt not bring drinks and drink and you burn them. Thou shalt not chew gum in the sanctuary. Thou shalt not. These are things that fulfill the law that we have in place. So if I see you do it, I can, I can demand and say, you need to stop chewing that gum. Mm -hmm. Or would you please not drink sodas in here that you don't? See, I, have, I can demand those things to be done. It is the act of asking with authority. I have authority because I, can, I know what the law says. It is based on the recognized authority of the one who asks. It, and it builds upon a previous command or commandment. Thus, a demand assumes the requester has the right to make the request and a specified behavior in a specified instance or circumstance. You can do that. So now we have the law, we have the commands, and we have the demands of it. Wow. Now let's go to Deuteronomy. Now Deuteronomy is going to make a little difference to you. Let's go to Deuteronomy. And let's go to... Okay, I've got to get this, got to get this together here now. These things do mess up sometimes. 28. 
And we're looking at verse number one and two. We're going to stop at one and two because it's important you understand that. It says, now it says, if you faithfully obey, obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his Command. commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. So in other words, God has given us laws to live by. He has also given us the commandments to live by. And he's given us a command to live by. So now we got all of those things together. Amen? Now that's great. Now how do we live by them? What do we do with them? Let me give you a prime example, for example. Here I am in my house. I am the boss man. This is only on paper. This is not necessarily true. <laughs> don't, don't get all excited, guys, because I'm saying this. I, this is in church. I, I'm in church now, so y'all listen to what I have to say. I am in charge of my home. So whenever I put a law out in my home, that law has to be done. That's the law. For example, if I say, Everybody in my house has the right to privacy. They have the right to privacy. And so that means that if you're in your room and someone cannot come into your room without knocking on the door first. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, if I have a child, that's a different story. Let me tell you something right now. If I got children in my house, they have no doors that's locked. Right. Oh, yeah. They have no right. doors right. that I can't right. walk into yeah. like you're right. walking yeah. through. Right. Let me tell you right now, because if I if I got a if I got a child, a teenager in my house that I can't walk into their room, I got a problem. Amen. Yeah. And if I find out you're doing something that you ain't got no business doing in that room, you lose the door. I take the hinges off the door. That door won't be there long, see. But as long as you're doing right, everything else. If that's my law, that's what I said. And so that that is a law that's in the house. So I'm saying that everybody fulfills that law. Now, my son comes in and knocks on the door, or let me put it this way, he refuses to knock on the door. Mm -hmm. He just walks in. Mm -hmm. Now, I have the right to command him and tell him that, wait, the law of a house is, privacy is in the house. Mm -hmm. You cannot walk into, the, into one of the bedrooms without knocking on the door first. Right. And when someone bids you to come in, you can do that. But you don't walk in on your own. Mm -hmm. Now, I can command you not to do that. But if you do it, now I have the authority to demand that you do it. Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference. If there's a law, there's a command, now there's a demand. There are certain things you have to do. Now, if you don't fulfill that law, if you don't fulfill the command, you don't fulfill the demand, you know, we got some things we're going to have to get ourselves, there's going to be some chastising take place. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Because the law has been put into place. Now, let's look at it this way. We looked at the secular world, how does that look? How does that work with God? Oh, now stop and think about it. God has established many laws that influence our lives. God has given us laws to go by. Some of these govern the physical world in which we live. Others control our relationship. Things that God has already said. In the Garden of Eden, God has already set down laws for us to do things. He says, I, I'm giving you a law, and this law will not change. You can take dominion over the earth. It's your responsibility to do it. I'm making that a law. There he is. That's a law. God already made a law to seem to do it. He says, take dominion. He says, there's another law. He says, by Jesus Christ, you can already be healed. That's a law. I can be done. That's true. It's done. Don't have to say it anymore. It's already done. He's also made in the world today. He says, gravity. Gravity is here. That's a law. He put the law of gravity out there. So whether you like it or dislike it, gravity is there. If you don't believe it's going to work, jump off the road. <laughs> gravity got you. You don't have a choice. You will hit the bottom. Why? Because gravity is there. We work some things we can overcome it, but gravity is still there. Hmm. Some other laws he put out. He says that man <laughs> should not live with another man. Mm. That's a law. He put it out. He said it's an abomination. I don't like it. That's 
That's right. He said, I'm against same-sex marriages. That's a law. I don't like it. Don't do it. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of these laws, whether you like it or not, they're starting to infiltrate church. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Whether you like them or not. And we're making mistakes because we're getting some of the laws to be changed to, to be able to manifest whatever they think. Right. But they're trying to do it. And it's not working that way. I listened to the radio the other day and I thought it was, ooh, listen to this. Mm -hmm. And it says, even though the churches are putting in their um, bylaws about not being able to marry, same sex marriages and all that kind of stuff, you can, you can get out of that. He says, but here's a problem. He said, because the laws are coming up today is that a woman and a man, whatever, can go into any bathroom that they want to go into and be justified in doing it. Because the law says they can do it. Okay, that's one thing. And so it also goes on to say, and I was listening to this very closely, it says, so if that happens, and a man walks into a room or a bathroom with a small child and molests that child, he says, now the church is responsible for it. The church can be sued because of that. Now, even though he obeyed the law, and the law says they can go inside of it, and if it happens, the church is responsible. So how do you command the law that you can't even control? Oh, church, we're, we're living in perilous times. Yes. We're living in perilous times. So I'm looking at what do we do in this particular situation? But that's the way the rules are coming up today. Those are things we're trying to live by. We've got to live by those things. So we have to look at it. So other controls our relationship within our human families. And with God himself, for example, God has established marriage as a structure in which sexual relations should be enjoyed and children should be raised. That is his law. You shall not commit adultery is one of his commandments built on that law. He gives commandments relative to those laws, and he makes commandments on that which applies. His commandments is the commandments to our situation. If we resist his commands, we bring upon ourselves the natural consequences of his law. And every law has a consequence. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. That law was put there for a Amen. reason. There is a consequence yes. if you don't fulfill that law. That's right. Now we can demand and we can command and do all we want to do, but you still have a choice. Yes. Are you going to obey that law? Jesus. God has put the law out there for us, and it's only there for our safety. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know laws are there for our safety to protect us? When my son was small, coming up, we had laws, things that he had to live by, things he had to do. Whether he liked them or not, he still had to live by them. You know why? Because it was our law. How many of you got children that say, but, you know, <laughs> my dad and mom just don't want me to do nothing. They just want me to stay in the house and don't want me to go out with none of my friends. What about your friends? What kind of friends are you hanging with? See, mom and dad sat back and they look at the overall picture. Yeah. All that you look at is my peers. I want to be with them. I want to go out and do this and do that. But mom and dad are looking at you. know what? If you do that, son, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. We raised our son that way. Amen. And I want to say this because I think it's very important what my son did. And, and, and it's, you know, we was hard. We were, particularly my honey. My honey, she, she, had, she had, oh, Lord, she watched that poor boy. I felt sorry for him sometimes. I said, Lord, son, I wish I could get you away from this, but... Your mom's got some ideas, and we got to stand by them. So anyway, she stands by them. He stood by them. But I'm glad he did because, you know, one time he decided to go out with some of his friends. It was one of the rare times we let him go out. And he went down with these, all these boys out here, and they went to this house where all the friends were together, all these boys. And the parent evidently, and we did not go to the parents' house, and I think maybe we should have, he, the inside the house, they had a, a, a thing where they keep all their alcohol in. And these boys out there having their party out there at the house got into the booze. And they got inside there and they got to drinking and getting high. Terrence called. Terrence says, Dad. He says, yeah, what's up, son? He said, Dad, they're drinking alcohol. He says, uh, come and get me. And I said, whoa, okay, son, Dad's on the way. And so he did. And I went and got him. And it's amazing because afterwards it got out about these boys and all this booze. The school district found out about it. Mm 
because it was all school kids from that particular school had gotten together. And the parents were barred from ever having the kids into their home again. The children were all chastised in certain ways because of what they did. But the word that came out was this. That burden boy came home. Yes. Oh. That burden boy wasn't in it. He left. Right. He came home. He was not involved yes. in it. So I'm saying that the training that we gave him, yes. even though he may have balked against it, mm -hmm. he realized when something wasn't right. right. Mm -hmm. He said, it's just not right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done something that you knew in your spirit was not just right? You just didn't yeah. feel comfortable about doing it? Even though everybody else was doing it, you yeah. just didn't feel like it was for you? Right. Sometimes you got to walk away from those things. Right. If it doesn't feel right, then it's not right. Amen. Hmm. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. It says here, if something sounds too good to be true, <laughs> it probably is. Books and television may, may, may tell us that we are free to sleep around and to do other dumb things. Like pro-choice groups, cigarette ads, and may portray healthy, laughing men and women puffing away on particular brands and taste of cigarettes. That is wrong and doing nothing but destroying your body. Amen. It's destroying your body. There's always a consequence to you if, the, if you're going against the law. My wife and I and my son, the other day we were going, and I have to use this because it's, these are so lively things that has transpired with us. We got into this conversation, and I asked my son about this. I says, have you ever thought about what happened with us when we were on the Chesapeake Bay? Do you ever, did, does it ever cross your mind what took place while we were out there in the middle of the bay where we couldn't see any land? And what had happened there was we were, I'm trying to convince my wife at this time, I said, baby, what we need is a boat. We need us one day to fabulous sleeping boats. We need this and we need that. And I'm saying, you know what? We live right on the Chesapeake Bay. That's what we need. And I can fish off of it. We can go out and just enjoy it. Man, I got my story all together. I'm proud of what I was doing. So a friend of mine who had a boat, I said, come on, babe. Let's go out. We're going to get on this boat. And we're going to enjoy this trip. So my wife and I got on the boat. Got my son, put him on the boat. Put a friend of ours, his wife, they got on the boat with us. And the owner and his girlfriend, they were all on the boat. And we were out having ourselves a great time. Out in the middle of Chesapeake Bay. There's big signs out there everywhere, do not dive in the water, do not get in the water, do not swim, do not do this. Everywhere you look at, do not get in the water. Those are the laws out there, don't do it. Don't do it, not in the Chesapeake Bay. Everybody's telling you don't get in the Chesapeake Bay. So we're enjoying ourselves and we're eating out there on the boat and we're playing in the water and all this stuff. And all of a sudden we heard a splash. This lady's wife, a husband, dove off to the Chesapeake Bay. We heard a splash and we all turned around to see what was going on. And there was Bill in the water. When I looked over and saw Bill, all I could see was his back up in the air and he was going down. I'm saying, oh Lord, look. I said, Bill needs help. Bill needs help. And about that time, Bill got, was pretty bad. Well, I could swim, but I wasn't going to dive into Chesapeake Bay, I hadn't been drinking like that, that I was going to take that kind of chance. But I tried to reach over to grab Bill, but we couldn't get him. But the owner of the boat, they called him the rubber band man. <laughs> That's when we had those hand titles on, you know, one of those type things. He dove over the side, and he tried to get Bill out of the water. Couldn't get him. And so the water was pulling Bill away. And as it was pulling Bill away, the owner of the boat hauled off. He says, Wendell, I can't get back. I can't get back. He says, I can't swim back to the boat. Now, this is my first time on this boat. I ain't never started this boat. I ain't never drove this boat. I ain't never done nothing in this boat before. But man, I got behind the wheel of that big jack there. I got that boat started. I, I drove that boat over to where he was at. And I got over the side of the boat. This is one of Dave Afro's two guys. This is Dave Big Afro's, okay? And he had, he had one of the big Afro's there too. And he was going down. He was gone. I got over the side of the boat, got out of the boat, hanging on to the boat, reached down and grabbed him by his Afro. And I got his head back above water to where he could breathe. 
So now I'm holding on to the boat, I'm holding on to his hair, and I'm holding on, I mean, we're sitting right in the middle of everything. So I finally got myself back into the boat. I reached down and grabbed this guy by his pants, flipped him upside down, got him back into the boat. Now he's back up, <laughs> can't breathe, and I'm saying, oh, Lord. Somehow or other, the, the Coast Guard got word of what was happening. Coast Guard started, the storm, was the storm was coming. Coast Guard comes over to us, and they take everybody off the boat but me and this girl. And so my wife is gone now, praise God, she's on, they took her to the side. My son got on the Coast Guard boat, they took him away. The guy that was sick, they rushed him back, me in the water, they rushed him back to the hospital. Uh, left me and this guy's girlfriend on the boat. Now she had never been on the boat either. This was our first time together on the boat. And so as I'm saying that, the Coast Guard says, okay, we got everybody off the boat, we got him back at the hospital, you can go back when you get ready because we're getting ready to leave. I said, leave for where? <laughs> he says, well, we're going back. I said, no, 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 no. You ain't going back leaving me out here. I said, because I don't know where I'm at. I can't see no land. I ain't never been in this boat before in my life. And you tell me you're going to leave me out here? I said, I got news for you. You're going to leave me out of here. He said, okay, fine. And about that time, a big storm come up. And everybody out there on shore says, mm hmm First Sergeant Burden was killed out at the Chesapeake Bay. So the word was out, I drowned it out there in the storm. And so when I come in, <laughs> when I come in, everybody said, you're still alive. <laughs> well, yeah, what did you think I was going to be? They yeah. thought I was in the storm out there, but we got in, we got back. So I'm saying that because he was disobedient to what the law was, mm -hmm. there's a terrible consequence yes. that takes place. Oh Bill died. He stayed in that water for a number of days until they found him. Wow. A number of days. So I asked my son this. That's why he came up. I said, son, does that ever affect you? Do you ever think about that? And he said, dad, I never thought about that. He said, but there are some things that I'm very frightful of, and I never dreamed about why. He said, because the effect that took place on that water affected him even to this day. Because I think about it often. It was very easy I could have been in that water. But I said, hmm, I got me a good wife. I ain't getting in no water going to I reached out to get that afro. But anyway, I got it back in the water, and we survived, and we're doing well. So he did die, and they had his funeral, and everything took place. But I'm saying this to say that the law is there for a reason. It's for our protection. If he had obeyed the laws, it would not have happened. Excuse me. Too often we resist obeying the rules and living within a given set of laws. Stipulations or regulations because we see them as having a negative rather than a positive impact on our lives. We always look at laws. Mm. I want to drive as fast as I want to drive. I don't want to be slowed down. You act like you're on the Autobahn in Germany, mm. somewhere where there is no laws, where they can drive as fast as you want to. But laws here in the States are for a reason. It's, yeah. They help us, our lives. Yeah. Mm. The regulations, because we see them as having negatives rather than positive, you know, the thou shalt not laws, you know, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. All parents have heard the complaint, you just, you just want me to, no, no, you have no fun at all. You want to keep all these restrictions on me so I can't do nothing. Avoid being in friends' homes and all these things that take place. Very often we transfer this same attitude into our relationship with God. We see God throw, uh, throw shout nots as his means of taking fun away from our lives. When God says, thou shalt not, or God gives us rules and laws to go by, right. believe me, it's for our own protection. Yes, yes. We have to obey. The scripture is full of things that he's telling them. He's not trying to restrict you from having a good time. He's trying to restrict you from hurting yourself. Yeah. You hurt yourself. I'm telling you, you will put yourself in a predicament if you disobey what God's got for you. And I, I, as I wrote this down, I thought about the apartment buildings that I own. It says, Perhaps a young couple believes that an apartment house rules to rent only to married couples inhibits their freedom to live together. And it does, because I'm not going to have someone shacking up in one of my apartments. That's right. If I know you're not married, I'm not renting to you. That's right. 
That's just my standard that I go by. That's my law in my apartments. If you're not married, you're not living there. It's just that simple. And if I find out you are, I'll evict you. Huh. That's just the rules. So we have to abide by the rules that I have. Benefit of laws protect. The child who lives with no rules and restrictions is much more likely to get hurt or to end up in trouble than the child who lives within a structure of parental guidance. Because he has no boundaries or guidelines against which he can judge his actions. And kids are looking for some boundaries. They're looking to say, how far can I go? Kids are looking around saying, how far can I go? And so what happens, they're pushing the limits, they're pushing the limits, they're pushing the limits. How far can I go? If you don't tell them how far they can go, they're a danger not only to themselves, but they're a danger to society. Amen. So you've got to put boundaries on them. God, a person without the boundaries of God is a dangerous person. Amen. A person that has no controls by the word of God and what God's laws are is a dangerous person to be around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's no limit to what they'll do because there's no boundaries. And if there's no boundaries, where do we stop them? Things like, don't be playing in the kitchen. That's a rule. Obeying traffic laws. That's a rule. There's many benefits to obeying the rules that we have. Those laws there are for a reason. There's great benefits as we, as we go through them. And also, if you disobey the laws, you must understand also there, you're going to find some other things that are going to happen to you. Excuse me. You're going to be chastised in ways you don't want to be chastised. Let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy again. I want to go back again. I want to go back to what that scripture says again. Now I want to, I want to go a little further this time. Now let's go back again. It says, And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you mm -hmm. if, uh oh, yeah. it says if mm -hmm. you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, if you obey the voice of your God, listen to what it says. Mm -hmm. Blessed shall you be in the city. Mm -hmm. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be you be when you come in, and blessed will you be when you're going out. All because you were obedient to what God said. Yes. Hey, that's being a blessing. We ought to get excited yes. about that. Because yes. if you're obeying the Lord of God, look what you've already got. Yes. It says the Lord will cause your enemies to rise and rise against you to be defeated before you. Everybody that comes against you can't win. They can't win. Because you can't lose because of the stuff you use. Amen. Amen. So they shall come against you in one way and flee seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your barns and in all, you, in all that you will undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he was sworn to, to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his way. My God, can you imagine how beautiful it will be? Yes. And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. Mm. When people see you, do they know that you are a, man, you're a person of the Lord? Yeah. Or are you so busy breaking the law sometimes that people don't know who you are? <laughs> they don't know what you stand for. Mm. Wow. Don't know what you're with or what you're not. Mm. But it says even the people mm. himself. Uh -huh. And all the people of the earth shall see, and you are called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of you. Mm. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity. 
in the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your livestock and the fruit of your ground within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you the good treasures, the heavens, to give, listen here, to give to you rain to your land and in season and bless all the work of your hands. Everything you do is going to be a blessing. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Let me be a lender, not a borrower. Yes. Because you'll be a slave mm -hmm. to the lender. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods and to serve him. My God, there is no limitation to what God says he can do for you if you just follow his commands. Amen. Living in my household, my son, as long as he obeyed everything that I had in my household, boy, he reaped some benefits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that boy reaped benefits you wouldn't believe. In fact, at one time he says, Daddy, I enjoy being the only son. He said, because I'm reaping all the benefits. I said, you sure are. And every time he turned around, you know, son, what do you need? In fact, he upset me one day. I, 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 I bought him something one day. Because he was, he, was he was a good boy. I bought him something one day, and I saw this thing, and I, we were in a store. And I, I saw this. I said, Terrence, you like that? He says, yeah, Daddy, I like it. So I bought it. And so we got home. And we was, he was talking to his mother. I said, yeah, I said, Terrence liked that, and he wanted that, so I got it. He said, no, 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 Dad, that's not true. I said, what do you mean, son? He said, Dad, I didn't ask you for that. Mm -hmm. He said, you asked me if I liked it. I said, yeah, I, I, I said, yeah. He said, but I didn't ask you for it. You just bought it on your own. Mm -hmm. oh. I said, oh, you're right, son, I did. Okay. But you know, that's the way God is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're being obedient to him, there is no limit to what God wants to give you. Even things you don't even ask for, he wants to bless you. I mean, <laughs> I can remember the time when I was looking for a car. I needed a new car, and all I could think about, all I need me is a new Pontiac. I want me a Pontiac. If I could just get me a Pontiac, man. I wanted the GTO, but my wife wouldn't go along with it. But I ended up, I, I wanted to, okay, we ended up buying a Bonneville. I, being, oh, yes, Lord, this is what I need. I got to have this car. And then I said, Lord, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. And we were being obedient to the Lord. We prayed about buying that car before we went. Mm -hmm. Not only did we just buy it, but we prayed about that thing. And Lord, what would you have us to do? And the Lord showed me what he needed to do. He says, I want you to go to this dealership here. I want you to go to this place. Get very Pacific. Go here. I want you to go there. I want you to wear your military uniform. And I want you to do this. He says, go up there. There's a car waiting for you. I said, ooh, yes. So we got in this old Pontiac boy, and we're, going, we're looking for us another Pontiac. Pulled up to the Pontiac place, and I said, I ain't got no, I can't do what you're asking for. I said, it's too much money. So we kept looking around. Couldn't find the car. Lord, I don't know what we're going to so Everything that they're showing me, I can't afford. I said, I can't afford this. I said, but I know a Pontiac, is, if I can get me a cheap Pontiac, I'll be all right. I'll be okay. The man walked over to me and said, Sarge. I said, yes. He says, you're looking for a Pontiac. I said, yes, I am. I said, but my money is limited. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. I said, what's that? He said, because you're in uniform mm -hmm. and you're a soldier, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, see that car sitting in the window over there, that brand new car sitting there? I said, yeah. He said, I'll sell that to you cheaper than the Bonneville. Mm -hmm. I looked at him. He said, are you kidding me? That's a brand new Cadillac sitting over there. <laughs> I said, are you kidding me? He says, yeah, it'd be cheaper than a Pontiac. I said, no, no, you can't do that. He said, yes, I can. Mm. He, said, I'm, I'll, he said, I'll knock it down low enough for you to buy that Cadillac. Rather than, and see, my thing was, I limited myself mm -hmm. to the Pontiac. Mm -hmm. And God says, no, I'm going to treat you better than that. I'm going to put you in a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did with my son. So because he was being obedient to me, I gave him something he wasn't even asking for. And so the Lord blessed me with something that I wasn't even asking for. He said, because you're being obedient to me, yeah. you fulfilled everything I've asked yes. you to do. Yes. You prayed before you went. You, you put on your uniform 
them like I told you to. You went to the place I told you to go to. You did exactly what I told you to do. But because you were obedient to what I told you, I'm going to bless you beyond what you're asking for. Yes, you did. And that's what my God does for you. Yes. So I'm saying when you're obedient, yes. God will bless you. Amen. And I get excited because I want to be obedient. I, I want to be blessed with what God got for me. Amen. i got to be one more thing here because here's the thing. Just as you are being obedient to what God's got for you, if you're disobedient, there's a consequence there also. So let's go down to verse number 15. I'm going to read a few of these. I want you to understand what they said. It says, but if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall be the city. Cursed shall be the field. Oh, I think about the city we got today. Yeah. I think about the towns we got today. I think about our government, oh Lord. Cursed. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed will you be when you go out. Ooh, I don't want all that on me. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, frustration, and all that you undertake to do until you are destroyed and perished quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilence strip, stick to you until he has consumed you off the land that you are entering to take possession of. You think you're going there. You think you got it. God said, I'll take it away from you. Mm. The Lord will strike you with wasting diseases and, and with fever, inflammations and fiery heat and through, through doubt and with blight and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. And the heavens over your head shall be bronze and the earth under you shall be iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land power and your heaven dust shall come down on you until you are destroyed. There's a consequence in not following God's word. Amen. Just as there's a blessing for doing it, there's a curse for not doing it. So we wonder sometime today, why are we going through some of the things that we're going through? Why are we experiencing some of the things that we're experiencing? We're experiencing them because we're being disobedient to the word of God. Mm. That'll make any church be quiet. Could have had a thousand people in here, you wouldn't have heard people over that one. Because that's who we are. I'm going to read this a couple more, then we're going to close out. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And you shall be a horror to all the kingdom of the earth, and your dead body shall be food for all birds of the air and for the beasts of the earth, and there shall be no one to frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors and scabs and itch of which you cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with uh, madness and blindness and confusion of mind and you shall grope at noonday as the blinds grope in the darkness and you shall not prosper in your ways and you shall be only oppressed and robbed continually and there shall be no one, no one to help you. Read the rest of it before yourself. So many things that we have. But we have to be obedient to the word of God. If you're being disobedient, there's a consequence. My ultimate goal is, I want to be obedient to the word. How do you be obedient to the word? Read the word. Study the word. Come to a Bible study. When you have questions asked, you don't want to live a life knowing that you're not fulfilling what God's got for you. God has put his spirit inside of us. Do you know when something is not right, do you know your spirit inside of you will jump? Yeah. And it will take something here that's just not right. Why am I doing it? And you can break it. Mm -hmm. If there's a generational curse that's come on you, we can break that generational curse. It doesn't have to stay on you, and it doesn't have to go to the generation behind you. Because you have authority to break that thing right now in the name of Jesus. 
my God. My God. For powers we have in the name of Jesus. Let's get to our deep. I close out here. It's here. I don't know how you've been living your life the last few years or the last few weeks or the last days. But if you know in your heart that some of the things you have done is not according to God's word, we know that our ultimate goal today is that we always fulfill what God's got for us. I can't answer questions for you. You can answer these for yourself. Is there things in your life or things in your family or those that you're hanging around that causes your spirit to leap and know that it's not exactly what God has for you? Then you have an opportunity this day to say, God, I beg of you to forgive me for these things that I've done to my life and made me right with you. I want you to know that you can come this day and say, Father, I've disobeyed your commands. I've disobeyed your law. I've disobeyed your commandments. I, I, I've done things that I know is not exactly according to your word. So I ask you this day, would you forgive me for those things? Do you know that when you ask for forgiveness, God is just and true to forgive you of all unrighteousness? His word says that he will take those things that you have done and he will separate it as far as the east is from the west. He says he will even take it and put it into a sea of forgetfulness, a sea that no one will be able, be able to go up. And it says forgetfulness because nobody will even know where it's at to even go try to dig it back. Deep sea divers won't be able to find it. Because when God takes it away, it's away. So if you're living that life today and you feel like you need to ask God to forgive you of all of these things, the altar is open today. The altar is open this evening. We have people here to pray with you over those things, but you don't have to carry those things. If you feel like you're not close enough to the Lord, let me tell you what, now's the time to get close to Him. If you don't know Him, Lord, as the Lord and Savior of your life, today's an opportune time that you may be able to do that. That you can go forth you can accept him as Lord and Savior of your life. And as you accept him as Lord and Savior, wow, you'll know him as Lord. I thank you for that, Lord. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. I thank you that you are the Lord of our lives. I thank you that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. I praise you in everything. Let my walk be a walk that will glorify you. Let the talk that I talk be a talk that will glorify you and give you praise. May I learn to trust in you with all of my heart. Lean not into my own understanding, but in all thy ways I want to acknowledge you so that you can direct my path. I praise you for that part. I give you glory. I give you praise. And I give you honor. Thank you. Be with us this evening as we depart from here. Keep your protective arms around us. Put a shield totally around everyone that's here. The fiery darts cannot penetrate what you are protecting. That we may reap the benefits that you have for us. I give you praise for that. I give you glory and honor for it, Father, in thy son's precious name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God.